Good evening folks and welcome to what will be our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer meeting here in Mulvin Free Presbyterian Church just on the edge of Victoria Bridge. I want to welcome you in the name of the Lord and we trust that you'll be able to stay with us for the next half hour this evening as we study God's Word. Tonight we're coming to look at Elijah's recovery. This is the fifth uh, part in the series of Elijah sitting under a cloud, Elijah's time of depression. We're going to read in a little moment from God's Word from 1 Kings chapter 19. But before we do, let us seek the Lord's face together for his help, no matter where we are tonight, that the Lord will come and help us as we come around his word. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee that we can come into thy presence this evening in the Saviour's name. And Lord, we rejoice in all thy mercies to us another day. Lord, we thank thee for the health and strength that thou hast given to us that we take so often for granted. And Lord, for the beautiful day that it has been, Lord, we lift up our hearts and we say thank you. And, o God, we do thank thee most of all for Calvary and for the cross. I thank thee for thy Son, O God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who now is seated at thy right hand, ever living to make intercession for us. But, O God, we thank thee that thou didst send him into the world not to condemn us, but that the world through him might be saved. And, Lord, we thank thee for that uh, great salvation which was wrought and bought for us at the cross of Calvary through the precious blood of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And our Father, we thank thee that when Christ ascended, Lord, thou didst send us the Holy Spirit, Lord, to come and to dwell within us and to help us and to strengthen us. And our God, this evening, as we turn to thy word, Lord, as we come to this fifth part in the series of Elijah sitting under a cloud, and Lord, we come to see his uh, reviving again. Lord, we pray that tonight that thou will come, and Lord, that thou will give us help. Lord, undertake for us this evening, no matter where we might be, Lord, we pray that thou would speak to us through thy word. And our Father, we ask thee this evening, Lord, that thou will come, and Lord, once again, that thou will keep thy hand upon all those who are at the forefront of the battle against this COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, remember all those that are critically and seriously ill. And, O oh God, we pray that you be pleased, Lord, in thy mercy, Lord, to touch them and to heal them again, according to thy will. Lord, we pray for a land. Lord, we ask of thee, Lord, that thou would be merciful to us. And, O oh God, that soon that we might have a vaccine. But, O oh God, we pray that even thy people, Lord, that we will turn back to thee. Lord, that once again we might see reviving in our land as it was in 1859. Lord, we pray that it might be in 2020, when God will come. And, Lord, he moves through the hills and the valleys. And, Lord, that he'll sweep many souls into glory. O oh God, let this pandemic be the catalyst for that. But, O oh God, tonight as we come to study thy word, Lord, come and meet us at the very point of our need. Lord, that thou will be our teacher. Lord, that thou will be our encourager tonight. Lord, we ask that you would lift up those that are cast down. And, O oh God, this evening we pray that they might find their feet. For we ask it all in our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. As we said, we're turning to 1 Kings in the chapter 19 this evening. We're going to read from the verse 8 of that chapter. And here we are, we're sitting under uh, the juniper tree with Elijah. And the Lord has uh, prepared him and given him two meals. He has got two sleeps. And it says, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that made forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. 
But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life, to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest unto Hazael, to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat, and Abimehoah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it came to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth that hath not kissed him. So he departed thence, and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. We'll end our reading there, and we trust that God will add his blessing this evening uh, to the reading of his word. For over a, a month, immediately after the great conquest of Mount Carmel, God's servant Elijah has been under the dark cloud of depression. After he had heard about Jezebel's threat to slay him, he had fled into the wilderness. He wanted to get away from everybody, wanted to get alone. And there in the wilderness, he sat down under this horrible juniper tree. He's exhausted. And here we find him wishing that he could die. He's feeling that he's worthless. But the Lord never forsook Elijah, nor did the Lord cast Elijah away in his time of trouble and depression. Rather, the Lord prepared him, as we've said, two meals, and stayed by his side on two occasions while Elijah slept. Now, after that, still under this dark cloud of depression, instead of going back to where he had left, ran away from God, uh, Elijah, because of his fear, he, uh, he was he used the gifts uh, 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 and the strength that God had given him, mainly the meals. And he ran further away from God. And for 40 days, we find Elijah wandering aimlessly in the wilderness, taking 40 days to do a journey that three or four days should have done. And he's wandering uh, out there in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights before he comes to Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai, that is. And yet again, the Lord went with him every step of the way through that weary wilderness. The Lord went by his side, protecting him, strengthening him. And we see the Lord, the Lord dealt patiently with him. The Lord dealt compassionately with him. The Lord dealt graciously uh, with Elijah as he went through this awful, difficult time of depression. Isn't it wonderful? How the Lord takes care of those that are cast down. Isn't it wonderful that he never leaves our side when we're under that dark cloud? We may not see him. doesn't change the fact that the Lord is always there by our side. But finally, after these 40 days in the wilderness, Elijah eventually comes to Mount Horeb and he entered into a cave, meaning to lodge there for a night and maybe go on further. And once again, the Lord never forsakes him, for he's right there in the cave with Elijah. But Elijah, he's now able to talk about his illness. He's able to talk about what's bothering him. He's able to discuss 
uh, this depression. Uh, and so the Lord asks Elijah the question, what doest thou here, Elijah? Uh, uh, Elijah shouldn't have been there. Elijah was out of the will of God. But that's so often what depression does. We panic, we fear, and we step out of the will of God. But at last, Elijah, he tells the Lord about what's troubling him, namely the apostasy of the nation. The people had got so far away from God, and you know, it really grieved Elijah to his heart. It really bothered him. In fact, it got him down. It was one of the major factors that caused this bout of depression. But not only that, but Elijah told the Lord God about his fears. He said, they seek my life to take it away, as we seen last night. Here was Elijah, he, he's telling the Lord what was troubling him, telling him all about his fears. Let me encourage you again this evening. If you're cast down or depressed, you ought not to feel guilty about it. It's just another illness. But remember, the Lord will not condemn you for it. But he will go through the valley with you, step by step. But please, talk about what's troubling you. Even to a friend, talk, talk about your fears, talk about your worries. But child of God, this is important, tell the Lord all about them as well. That's what Elijah was doing here. And that's the privilege that every child of God has. It's a privilege that others don't have, but the child of God has. We can bring our troubles, we can bring our burdens, we can bring our fears unto the Lord, and he will sustain us. Well, the Lord had now got Elijah's attention. Elijah's beginning to talk about what's troubling him. He's talking about his depression. And so the Lord takes Elijah to the entrance of the cave. And there what Elijah sees and hears, it speaks to his heart and it lifts his spirit again. And so this evening, I want us to consider the recovery, the reviving of Elijah from his bout of depression. Now, firstly, notice the passing by of the Lord. In verse 11 we read, uh, where the Lord said unto Elijah, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. Now, notice the place where the Lord told Elijah to stand, upon the mount. Remember that Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai, where Moses went to meet with God and to receive the Ten Commandments and all the instructions of the tabernacle and all the precepts and ordinances of God. And so it's not unlikely, we can't be definite about it, but it's not unlikely that Elijah was now standing where Moses had stood a few centuries before. And as Elijah stood where God had told him to stand, just notice he's back doing the will of God again. But he's standing where God had told him to stand. Uh, and we read, And behold, the Lord passed by. The Lord was going before the wind. He's going before the earthquake. He was going before the fire that was to follow in his train. It's as if the Lord was saying to Elijah, Elijah, I want to show you something. I want to teach you uh, some lessons that I feel you need to learn. You know, isn't it wonderful to see what's happening now? And, and how the Lord is dealing so graciously with Elijah. Oh, how the Lord understands those who are cast down. How he understands how they feel. How patiently the Lord tarried with Elijah. And how patiently the Lord tarries with those that are cast down. How patiently, how graciously he deals with them. And how ready he is to help them when they will allow him, when they're ready. The psalmist says in Psalm 147 verse 3, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Isn't he a wonderful saviour? 
Isn't he a great shepherd? Caring for the sheep. Can I say to those who were cast down for whatever reason, or because of the, the pandemic and the lockdown, the Lord is passing by before us every day. He tarries with us. He goes before us. But also he passes by us. Why? To encourage us. That's what he's doing for Elijah here. That's what he does for us. We don't see him with our eyes. But nonetheless, the Lord is there going past us every day. He wants to encourage us. He's even saying to us, even in the midst of this COVID-19 lockdown, he's saying, I have lessons that I want to teach you. There's lessons that I want you to learn. Just watch what's coming. I I have no doubt that even in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic and this lockdown that we're under, I I have no doubt that uh, uh, is the Lord not teaching us the importance of some things? Because the churches is closed. Is the Lord not teaching us the importance of our church and the fellowship of God's people? We've taken all these things for granted in the past and the importance of the prayer meeting and the evening service. Is he not teaching us that? The importance of these two meetings which we so often and so easily neglect you know, there's times it was nearly a toss of a crown whether we'd go to the evening service or not. It was nearly head or tails whether we'd go to the prayer meeting or not. And now it's all taken away from us. Are we not learning the importance of it? But more than that, the Lord passes by before us saying, there's lessons that I want to teach you through this time of depression. And the lessons that I want to teach you is this, my greatness and my power. You know, whenever we're cast down, it's then that we see clearer the greatness and the power of the Almighty. But maybe you're not saved this evening. Can I say to you that I believe that the Lord is passing by at this time of COVID-19. Surely the Lord is speaking to our nation and speaking to the world because of its sin and its apostasy. How far, like the nation of Israel in Elijah's day, how far has our nation gone away from God? How awful are the sins that it has permitted and legalized? But in mercy, he's passing by. You know that all the predictions of the thousands that would lose their lives in this pandemic. But the Lord has been gracious. And we're down in the hundreds. Now one is too many. But oh, we have been so gracious that relatively few, compared to the predictions, has passed away. The Lord's passing by. And he's speaking. But sadly, it doesn't seem to be that our nation is listening. Nor is it learning any of the lessons that God has for us about spirituality and moral, moral, morally. But what about you? The nation's not listening, but are you listening? The nation's not learning the lessons that God has to teach us, but are you learning the lessons? Will you repent of your sin and turn again to the Lord? There was the passing of the uh, up by the Lord. And notice the phenomenons that followed. As Elijah stood there on the mount, just outside the cave, just inside the cave, we should say, we read that in verses 11 and 12, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Now, the emphasis is put on the wind here, and the damage that the wind done. And then there's the earthquake, and then there's the fire. But what was the Lord saying to Elijah? What was the Lord teaching Elijah in these three phenomenons uh, of nature? Well, I believe that the Lord was saying to Elijah, you have no need to fear Jezebel. 
She might have earthly authority and she might have earthly powers. Yes, she might, uh, in the world says, be able to put you to death. But listen, he says, Elijah, I command and I control all the powers of nature. These are all the things that are at my disposal. I can destroy Jezebel just with one breath. I can take her away. He says, I have made the wind and I command it. He says, I have made the earth and I can shake it. And he's saying, I made the fire and I can use it if I please. Elijah, you have no need to fear Jezebel. I am the Almighty. I am your God. And he's saying, Elijah, I can keep you. And I will protect you. Child of God, remember this, that our God is the Almighty One. And no one and nothing can put us out of his hand, he says. He can keep us and protect us in life. And he can keep us and he can protect us in death. Yes, some of God's people have been taken in this COVID-19. But was the Lord not with them there in their death? Oh, he was there. He can keep us in life. He can protect us in death. And he can keep us and he will keep us for all eternity. What a wonderful saviour. No matter what life brings our way, hold on fast to and hide thyself in the shadow of the Almighty. Hide yourself under his wings. He is our cave, as it were. He is our refuge. When Elijah stood there <coughs> in the cave, you know, the wind and the earthquake and the fire couldn't harm him and didn't harm him. And when we hide ourselves in the Lord and make him our refuge, Nothing can harm us. Nothing can take us away from belonging to the Lord. Psalm 61 and Psalm 62, lovely Psalms. The psalmist wrote these words in Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Listen, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Verse 3, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. When our, my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm depressed, when I'm cast down, lead me to the rock, lead me to Christ. In Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. Listen to this. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence. I shall not be greatly moved. Let me say again, no matter what life brings across our path, and it brings some difficult things at times, I have walked in rugged paths, but thank God every path I've had to go down, how the Lord has been by my side. No matter what life brings across our path, and no matter what is happening, before us. Remember this, that our God is greater than all of our problems. He's greater than all of our fears. And remember this, and let this lift your heart to me. Let this encourage you if you're cast down. No one and nothing, not even death itself can pluck us out of his nail-pierced hands. Discouraged and cast down soul, as the psalmist says, hope thou in God. He's the Almighty. He's the one that controls the wind and the earthquake and the fire. He is the Almighty God. And all these things are at his disposal. He can say to the wind, blow and it blows. He can say to the earth, shake and it will shake. He can say to the fire, fall and it will fall. There was a passing by of the Lord. There was a phenomenon that followed. Thirdly, notice the recovery of Elijah. You'll notice that the Lord was not in the wind. He went before it and he came after it, but he wasn't in the wind or the earthquake or the fire. Now, at other times, the Lord was in the, in the, in the wind. In Nahum, chapter 1, verse 3, we read, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. 
For the Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds and the dust of his feet. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind. In Job 38 verse 1 we read, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Oh, there's times that he's in the wind. At other times the Lord also uses the earthquake. In Psalm 68 verse 8 we read, The earth shake that the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Mount Sinai shook at the presence of God. God was in the earthquake on that very mount where Elijah was standing. At that time, in Moses' time, God was in the earthquake. But he wasn't in the earthquake that Elijah felt. And of course, God sent the fire on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, because of their sodomy and their immorality. But God wasn't in the fire on this occasion in Elijah's day. But the Lord, you notice, went before these phenomenons. He was teaching Elijah and showing Elijah his power and his authority. But notice, after they had passed, Elijah heard a still small voice. It was the voice of the Lord. And he says to Elijah, What doest thou hear, Elijah? And again, Elijah gave the same answer as he had given before. You know, Elijah had been very passionate about the name of and the sake of and the glory of the Lord of God. So much so that it had gotten him down. But because he was so passionate, the Lord knew, here's a man that I can trust. It's because he was so passionate that he was cast down. But even though he was cast down, the Lord looked at Elijah and he says, here's a man that I can use. And so he told them in verse 15, he says, go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And then he tells them what to do. The Lord tells Elijah what he wants to do is cast down, yes, but he's now ready for work again, ready for service. And with one more note of encouragement, that things were not as bad as Elijah had originally thought, that there was still 7,000 prophets that hadn't bowed the knee to Baal. He says, Elijah, you're not on your own. It's not as bad. He says, I want you to go and do this one day. And Elijah obeyed. In verse 19 we read, so he departed thence. You know, here was Elijah. <clears throat> he learned the lessons and he has now recovered from this spout of depression. You know, if you're cast down this evening, take encouragement from this. If Elijah could recover, so can you. If the Lord can lift up Elijah and use him again, he can lift you up and he can use you again. If you're cast down, remember this. There is hope. And there is recovery. I know it personally. There is hope and there's recovery from getting cast down, especially when we hear the still small voice of God saying, Trust in me. My time is gone. But it's not important that you hear my voice tonight. I want you to hear that still small voice of God. That will change things. And may you be encouraged as you hear that still small voice. May you be encouraged and may you know his help and his strength and enjoy the recovery that that still small voice of God can bring to your heart. Unsaved friend, if you have heard a still small voice convincing you of your need of a saviour, don't ignore his voice tonight. Come and trust him. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. We'll just close in a very brief word of prayer. Father, bless thy word. And every soul that hears it tonight, Lord, those that are cast down, give them hope. Lord, let them lift their eyes to thee. May they hear that still small voice. And oh God, we pray that their hearts will be encouraged and that they will be blessed. And know what it is to walk with God. Be with us now wherever we are. Keep thy hand upon us for good, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.